we got caught up in obviously that's a shot at the Cowboys. I know. Super Bowl fever last week while we we're in Las Vegas, but pitchers and catchers report for the Texas Rangers, the world champion Texas Rangers tomorrow. That is happening. And I wanted to run back through something that we had talked about a couple of weeks ago and see what your belief level is in this. We talked about things that the Rangers need to have another successful season or best case scenario, hopefully start to build their own little dynasty here. Not little dynasty. You went two in a row. You're yeah. on, you're starting. You're on your way. Is one of the things that we talked about from an article from Evan Grant was at least one of Jack Leiter, Owen White, or Zach Kent mm. proves capable of making more than half a dozen starts by the end of the season. And so I was kind of looking at their minor league careers and everything like that. And I wanted to know how confident are y'all that this can happen? And do you have a candidate that's more likely than the rest? Because I realized when the draft happened, it was all Jack Leiter all the time. And I was absolutely on board with that train. We all three were so pumped that Jack Leiter was yes. the second pick. Right now, is he the third most likely to complete this for you? I don't know. Owen White last year... Struggled tremendously after getting called up. He did. And when he went back down, they thought, well, hey, give him another month. He kind of saw what a major league game is like. It's not like you got you got a taste. You don't know exactly how it would go game in and game out, but you got an idea of the competitive nature of a major league lineup in a major league environment. I'm... I'm scared. I honestly am scared of the high ranking. And I shouldn't say that. The the pitchers at double A and triple A levels, the guys that are a, a, a good three starts away from making your major league team, where if you're an A ball, you have a good month, they'll move you up to double A and see if you can handle that level. But when you're in double A, triple A, you get hot, you get called up to the majors. I am worried. I would put a lower percentage, like a 33% chance that one of these guys makes it as a, a everyday five man rotation pitcher. Uh agreed on all that what Mike just said, but I did have a dream last night that Jack Leiter made the starting uh made the opening day rotation. Oh my lord. So if my dreams <laughs> oh, wow, that is I hope you're right in awesome. a way. I hope he's so awesome. Not that you have so many injuries that you <laughs> have to because that can happen too where you're just man, we are so hurt right now. We just have to take Take our shots, but I'm with Mike. Dodgers had that last year. I'm with Mike in that I don't. I've never seen the Rangers develop pitching, so I can't believe that yeah. that they can do it this off season yet. But I'm hopeful, very hopeful. All right, so I guess I'm going to say Owen White is my. Be I'm going to go Owen White, then Zach Kent, then Jack Leiter, just because. Look, I hope, as Mike said, I hope your dream is correct. And me too. That I mean, you know, there are other dreams that I hope come true all the way a little bit quicker. But I hope your less famous dream is accomplished as well. Is I think Jack Leiter just he feels more and more like a major league bullpen piece. And so I would think your hope would go Owen White, then Zach Kent, then Jack Leiter. It's not like we're watching double A AA and triple A baseball games, but I'm asking this question. Why do you feel Owen White is your best shot? It seems like we don't always, you know, I think a lot about what you told me a long, a long time ago, Mike, about, you know, when we discuss meritocracy and how it doesn't always work quite like that. It seems like they have just been waiting to pull the trigger on Owen White longer, just like you were talking about with Foscue before. Is so it just sort of feels like they're like, hey. We we need pitching. Yeah. We're going to give this kid a shot at some point. A real shot. I did see the Major League Invite list. You guys probably got the email, yeah, yeah. too. Like, Cole Wynn is on that list. And I know now he's... A year ago, you would still go, Hell gosh, yeah. it's not going yeah. good at all. But it would be probably lighter Wynn and White in that order. And now Wynn is... He is going to Major League Camp. I can't even see them really giving him a chance to compete for a job. Like he needs to show that he can get triple A hitters out. But like that's the tough thing right now to Corey's point. And she's like, why is it for some reason? And we're talking about from the 70s to now, not yes. just John Daniels or not just Chris Young, is 
this organization has just seemed to really struggle to develop pitchers that help out the Texas Rangers. And that can be starting or otherwise, because one of the other things I wanted to break down with you guys, and, and I know there is a seemingly simple explanation to this, is you have to get better in one-run games. In the last two years, the Rangers are 29 and 59. Wow. Think about that. And I realize the easiest explanation for this route is because your bullpen's been some junk. So, okay, we got Josh Spores and uh, LeClerc. We're going to be fine. Oh, they did help lead you to David the Robertson last year. Yeah, and David Robertson. The Admiral. Admiral. Kirby Yates. That's, it's, that is a different person. Is You got to improve with the bullpen, but I do think starting pitching has something to do with this as well. But the Rangers are going to have to improve. Just think about if you could even get to 500. I'm not even asking you to be really good in one run game. Wasn't it like Get a to 500? Was it a playoff game last year where the Rangers trailing after eight hadn't won a game in 2000? Like they won the World yes. Series. And I think in the regular season, help me, I might was, be wrong here. They hadn't won one after seven until past the midway point of the season. It was like trailing after eight. They had never yeah. won a game, but then they had a big comeback win. Well, I think it was game one of the World Series, wasn't it? Yes, they did make when that Seager, comeback in the ninth. When Seager hit the two-run homer to tie it, and then they won it in extra innings with the Adolis Garcia home run. I could be wrong here. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But that might have been their first comeback going into the ninth inning. And so that's another big part of it as well. So better bats in the eighth and ninth. Better bullpen, better starting pitching. A lot of these things are obviously tied together. And then... The other, I know people are asking about Kumar Rocker. It's no, he's, he's not going to pitch this year. Away. It's not going to happen. Like I, I would say Brock Porter's closer by far than Kumar Rocker at this point. They're probably on maybe the same path of when they get to the majors because if you look at Porter, high school pick, he's going to start the year in high A ball. Yes. He's going to pitch the whole year in the minors this year. He's going to pitch the whole year in the minors in 2025. And then the hope is in 2026, if he develops quickly and, and well, he'll be ready to maybe pitch for you in 2026. Kamar Rocker, Tommy John surgery in June. He is missing this year. Of pitching, he'll pitch some in like Arizona Fall League type, not the the big time one, but like go to Arizona in the fall with the Rangers and work on bullpens and everything. And then in 2025, pitch in the minor leagues, make sure his arm is okay, and then in 2026, hopefully be a competitive pitcher for you in the major leagues. And then to add it all to this, as we're talking at least somewhat about pitching, is you continue to see this every day every other day a national writer who says no jordan montgomery is going to go back to the rangers mlb.com yeah. oh, thursday right. yeah today's tuesday mlb.com tomorrow's wednesday kevin just <laughs> thank you so it'll be the day after tomorrow oh no better get jake gyllenhaal on the horn we'll be all right is another article saying jordan montgomery Back to the Rangers. I, I'm, I'm curious. Come on. More and more, this disconnect between the national feeling that he's coming back and maybe a little bit more pessimistic my theory, feeling here. My theory is this. The national riders are talking to Montgomery's agent and talking to other teams' general managers, and they cannot find a team offering Montgomery a contract. You think Boston will dip back in? I don't know. I just think right now the, the national riders, my theory is, is that they can't find the team that they thought had interest in November, December that has any interest in February, and they're just going, well, then it makes logic sense that he's going back to the Rangers if I can't find San Francisco, New York, Boston, all these teams supposedly interested in Montgomery in November and December. They seem to have no interest in February. So I think they're just connecting it like, then he has to be going back to the Rangers because I can't find a team talking to Jordan Montgomery right now. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, I feel like we've addressed this several times, but we have new audience all the time. Why not sign Trevor Bauer for the league minimum? So there's a few things there. Has Trevor Bauer, I, heard he would, I heard he would do it for the league minimum, But has Kevin. Trevor Bauer himself come out and said that? I know Gary Sheffield Jr. said it on his behalf. I will believe Gary Sheffield Jr., Kevin. Okay. That's how you should do it. Never believe anybody else. He's the son of Gary Sheffield. If that know. makes sense. Is, no, I, I, don't, I, you're, I agree with you. I want to hear it from him. Yeah. I want to hear it from his agent. And then also Gary Sheffield Jr. said, don't believe the noise. He's well-liked by his teammates. We have multiple... People who have played with him in the past is like, that is not true. 
And so for people asking, why not take a chance on that? Yeah. I think they just think he's a bad culture guy for the room. You have Corey Seager who was with him for that last half season he was in the major leagues. So if I'm not saying Corey Seager is the end all be all. But if he signed off on it. But if he said, dude, I had no problem with Corey. I mean, I had no problem with um, Trevor Bauer. Then maybe that would help out the Rangers in that case. But it looks like, to be honest, it looks like the teams have gotten together and said, screw this guy. Keep him out of baseball. The, by the way, on, on Trevor Bauer, my feeling on that, like the, the mindset always, and especially with people that bring that up, can he pitch? Yeah, yeah, the dude can pitch. He's really good in Japan. Last I do year wonder. I do wonder if, like, what he learns from it, and if he even thinks he didn't needed to learn anything other than I, maybe I just need to make sure that the people I'm with are, you know, good quality people. Uh, but like that's that's a part of being kind of a. If people are like you're a bad teammate, does he learn anything from it? If he gets re-signed with the Rangers or, or signed with the Rangers or re-signed with another team, and that's the thing. Some people are saying on his podcast, he said he would sign for the minimum with incentives. And I'm just telling you, we've heard, check it out. we've heard from multiple people inside the organization that it just doesn't sound like the interest level is there from everything I understand. So whenever people ask why, that's my default answer. How many dudes on this team were a distraction this year? Yep, exactly. They like, have they, to like really think they didn't, about it. They didn't have any distractions on this team. DeGrom was they the guys most... that like went in and out of losing confidence. I brought up Ezekiel Duran, probably not a distraction. But you didn't feel like no, he was a distraction. He was trying yeah. his best to help the team at all times. It was just that he couldn't, like, just get out of that funk that he found himself in in, in kind of late July and August. But to yep. your point, everybody, from what we understand, on that plane in the clubhouse, even when they thought, well, what about bringing in Araldis Chapman? Because he's kind of this superstar type of guy. Uh, but they're like, pfft. Got along great, quiet guy. Yeah, but yeah. but no no issue like I deserve this or I want this. It was just no man. He's kind of quiet in the clubhouse. Doesn't really say much. Has a few guys that he talks to, but he gets along with the bullpen Very guys. He's just a committed. quiet guy. Yeah, all those dudes were team committed. Like that was none of them had that outside thing that was going to bring any of the hoopla in. And while Jerry loves to bring the hoopla in. The Rangers this year, they oh. were like, no, we're keeping it this way. Let me tell you something. If this was a football player who had the very similar resume, yeah, I absolutely believe can that he play? the Cowboys would make that sign. He can play.